Hi, everybody. Good morning and welcome to the class. Thank you so much for connecting and for watching the class. I hope this class will help that you will learn English and I hope that you will enjoy the class for vocabulary, for grammar and the objective. The idea is to give the free classes at the moment because of the pandemic. It's difficult for a lot of people to attend schools and it's difficult for a lot of people to have a teacher. So for this reason, it's a good objective for me to try to help at the moment. And this is my objective. This is my plan. And um, the structure will be very similar today compared to other days. And um, I'm just going to try and fix my camera. So one moment, I think we had some people joining. So that's perfect. And I'm just going to try and make it a little bit bigger so everybody can see. So the structure today will be very similar compared to the other days. And of course, at the moment, I'm recording on Zoom. We have some people joined on Zoom who can participate, but also the objective of the class is to record and upload later to Facebook and to YouTube. So on the left, you can see the plan for the week. This is the typical structure at the moment. It's probably temporary, but I'm very lucky to be able to do this. And the schedule is nine o'clock in the morning. We have a speaking group and a speaking class which is available for anybody to join. And the idea is just to practice conversation. We have a group and there is a WhatsApp group for people to book and reserve the place. That's nine o'clock in the morning. Now at 11.15, we have the free English class and we will continue with this structure. So there's a connection from every class. We try to make some um, momentum between all the classes and that's the plan as well at 11.15. And today at four o'clock, we have another webinar it's like a specific class at four o'clock and they're open for everybody they are um people can attend whenever you want there's no problem there's a small fee for the afternoon but in general it's open for anybody who wants okay so the structure today will be similar you can see an introduction document first and i explain the important terms when you learn english and the important terms for the class after the introduction document probably we will begin with an article. So I think here you can see the article, it's about different cruises, okay, a cruise ship. So that's the vocabulary for today. Very, very good quality vocabulary. And um, I'm looking forward to explaining the concepts and the vocabulary, so that's next. Um, and probably we will continue with the phrasal verb list, depending on the time and the idiom list as well. Okay, so first, let me begin with the introduction document, which is very, very important. Um, and some of you are probably very familiar with this document, of course. I hope we have no problem with the connection. I hope the connection is good. That's the most important thing. My dog is in the garden, so it's possible maybe during the class you hear my dog. But fingers crossed, he's not too um, active. He's in the garden at the moment. And then... Um, Everything is free, but at the end, if you want to make a small contribution, a small donation, it's possible with a few different methods. So that's a possibility at the end if you want to make a small donation or a small contribution. Okay. And finally, social media. We have all the usual typical social media channels, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. So you can see some interesting advice on Instagram and Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube are practically the same content as each other. So for me, this document is important. It's the introduction document. And the first section you can see is called use of English. The second section are tenses. And the third section is related to grammar in general. Okay, so there's three very, very important areas here in relation to English and during my class. So first, I want to explain very, very quickly the terms. So when you learn English, I think accents are maybe a big part to understand. We have lots of different accents in different parts of the world and dialects. So in Ireland, we have a possible accent. And in England, there's different accents. Scotland, the United States, Canada, and really everywhere you go, people speak English, but there's lots of different accents, different rhythms and different uh, dialects. So that's very hard when you learn English. The best advice to conquer this is to listen to different programs, different series, different movies, but number one, probably to interact with other people as much as possible and to speak frequently with different people is the best way to practice your listening for different accents. 
Okay, so for me, there are two very, very important topics when you learn English. The first topic is phrasal verbs. So the concept of a phrasal verb is the verb plus a preposition. And it's possible literal, exact significance, but frequently it's a second double significance. And that's the problem with phrasal verbs. They have a second significance and we have thousands of phrasal verbs. We use phrasal verbs all, <laughs> all the time. So they are a very, very important part of English for sure. And especially when you learn English, they are really, really key. Idioms are expressions. And again, we use expressions all the time. So for me, these two sections are really key. And here you can see a list of idioms. I try to explain every day, every week, a list of idioms and also a list of phrasal verbs with all the important phrasal verbs. So for me, this is very, very important during this class. And that's really the focus and the, the objective of this class. Conversation, of course, is key as well. You should hopefully try to find somebody to speak with. And conversation is very important to practice your English and to improve your English and to progress. So conversation is really, really key. And I recommend you try to practice regularly conversation. Okay, pronunciation is difficult in English and during the class, I try to help with pronunciation and that's also a focus of these classes, okay? Different tenses. So in English, we have different times when we speak. You can speak in the present, you can speak in the past, you can speak about the future, but you need to be familiar with the different terms and the technical terms. For example, the simple, present simple, past simple, future simple, okay? But the past simple, we have a lot of irregular verbs and this is tricky, this is difficult because it's necessary to learn all the irregular verbs in the past simple. And that's a big part of English. The next idea is the continuous. You have the present continuous, you have the past continuous, and you have the future continuous. So they're the two key, the key concepts. You have the simple, the continuous, and also the perfect. So we have the present perfect and the past perfect, but it is possible as well, the future perfect. So these are the most common tenses. And you can see the examples here. Um, the past perfect, I had been. Present perfect, I have eaten. So important, you are familiar with different structures and you are aware of the possible uses of them, okay? So the infinitive is basically the foundation and the base of the verb. Basically, the infinitive is with the preposition to, to hear, to go, to eat, to drink, to have. They are the infinitives. And during the class, I mentioned frequently the idea of the infinitive. So it's necessary that you are familiar with the idea of the infinitive. In Spanish, it's para beber, para dormir, para comer. In Portuguese, probably it's very similar. And other languages, you have the infinitive as well. Conditionals are a big uh, area. And on Monday, we had a class dedicated to grammar and we focused on the conditionals. And it was very tricky because you have rules and structures for zero, first, second, third, mixed conditionals. There's lots of structures and rules, but in reality, in conversation, it's less strict and it's more flexible. It's depending on the word if and the different times. Okay, so in reality, it's a little more flexible, but in the book and the theory, it's definitely a little heavy and a little difficult. So that's an important area that you need to be familiar with the conditionals, okay? And also a very impressive structure is the active and the passive. So the active is, for example, the subject, the verb and the object. Okay, so the man kicked the ball in the past simple. That's the active subject, verb, object. And to change the position, we create the passive. So the ball introduced extra verb to be was participle kicked by the man or the woman. Okay, so that's an, an important structure. It's called the passive and it's very impressive when you use it correctly. And it's also very frequent. People use it all the time and it's very, very good quality and it's necessary you are aware and familiar and practice the passive. Other concepts we have here is the noun, which is a person, a place, or a thing. That's the noun. Every noun, you need an article. For example, a football or the football. So there's two possible articles, a football or the football, okay? And there is another exception when the noun begins with the vowel, a, e, i, o, u. For example, apple, 
we need the article a n an apple okay so that's very important idea of the article we have an idea in relation to nouns it's possible countable and uncountable so can you count the noun is it possible to count for example television uh, computer football yes one computer two computers two televisions three footballs so yes these are possible to count and in that situation for countable we say how many how many pens how many days how many people and for uncountable for example chocolate money water people it's not really possible to count so we well sorry water we say how much chocolate how much money how much water so that difference of countable and uncountable is important in relation to how much and how many adjectives the position of the adjective is important in english the adjective is before the noun and the function of the adjective is to describe the noun okay so football big football the adjective describes the noun and the position is very important also we have the area of the comparative and the superlative when you compare two things this football is big but the other football is bigger than this football but the next football is the biggest okay that's called a comparative and a superlative and that's an important area of english the adverb is important to describe the function of the adverb is to describe the verb typically the position of the adverb is after the verb for example drink i drink quickly talk talk slowly and normally the adverb ends in ly that's the big really identification of the adverb in spanish it's mente suavemente lentamente actualmente so that's the adverb and the function of the adverb is to describe the verb better that's really the key modal verbs are a very particular area of english you can see the list here of modal verbs can could may might shall should ought to must have to they're the most common modal verbs can is typical for ability and permission i can cook lasagna it's my ability i can enter the room it's my permission so for ability and permission we typically use the verb can could may and might are typically used for possibilities and options i could cook the lasagna it's an option it's a possibility but maybe i do not okay so i could go to the city center i might go to the city center i may go to the city center for possible situations and situations with options they're the three verbs we use may and might are probably just a little more polite and a little more formal but the three have the same significance really shall is probably more formal and the substitution is for will for a question shall we watch the movie shall we contact your friend is a question will and it's a little more formal okay should is for recommendation situations when you recommend something or you give advice you should watch the football you should read this book and ought to is the same significance but a little more formal and a little more polite i think you ought to watch the football you ought to contact your friend and for obligation for situations of obligation normally we use the verb must you must read this book you must do the exercise it's obligation you have no option okay and the same is possible have to so must and have to are used in the same way and they're very very important okay so prepositions is the next area we have maybe 150 prepositions they are very small words that we use for direction okay so i walk i walk towards the city center direction i speak i speak to you i look i look at so for direction also movement i walk under the bridge i go over the mountain okay so for movement and also position the bottle is on the table the bottle is in my bag behind in front of beside above below so very very important you can imagine they are so key uh, for using english and they're necessary to understand and prepositions are really really important also <clears throat> in the area of phrasal verbs prepositions are key because they associate with the verb and they connect with the verb to make a second significance frequently in the phrasal verb usually there is emotion associated with the preposition as well okay for me the next area is typically confused and a lot of people need to be very clear the difference it's called the possessive adjective for example my bottle your bottle 
his bottle, masculine, her bottle, feminine, our bottle. So possession adjective. The second possibility is the possessive pronoun. So the bottle is mine, the bottle is yours, the bottle is his, masculine, and the bottle is hers, feminine. Especially for masculine and feminine, you need to be very clear. And the third possibility is the object pronoun. Give the bottle to me, give the bottle to you, give the bottle to him, masculine, give the bottle to her, feminine. Okay, so very, very important, these three areas. The difference between this, that, these, and those is important. The difference between another, other, the other, and the others is important. And also how to create the question is very important in English. And that's a typical topic, how to create the question. There are different ways to make a question in English, and it's a difficult area. Also, suffixes and prefixes is a very important area, in my opinion. It's an indicator for the form of the verb, of the word. Is the word a verb? Is the word a noun? Is the word adjective? Is it adverb? The suffix normally is a big indicator and a big help, a big hint, a big clue in relation to the form of the word. So for me, the area of suffixes and prefixes is very useful, in my opinion. Linkers, conjunctions, sometimes we have very basic and very simple linkers, for example, and, but, for, but we also have more advanced linkers. And when you grow with your English, when you develop your English, it's good advice to use and to be aware um, about the linkers and the conjunctions. You need to use them correctly and appropriately. They're very, very important. Vocabulary. So if you want to improve specific vocabulary, the best way to improve your vocabulary is to read. You need to read regularly. You need a routine to read newspaper, magazine, books on the mobile phone. You have lots of possibility, lots of websites to read for vocabulary. And that's a really good way to improve your vocabulary. It's really important. Writing is another skill and it's another ability. And you probably need to practice regularly your writing skills, and that's a key part of English. Listening, writing, speaking, reading, grammar. They're the five areas you need to maintain. You need to practice regularly to develop and to keep your English, in my opinion, okay? Exams, we have a lot of exams in English that are available. You have the Cambridge exams are very popular. They're all the possible Cambridge exams. And also the IELTS exams are very popular as well. And I have specific classes dedicated to each exam. For example, tomorrow at four o'clock, it's the IELTS exam group. And we have different classes uh, available separate from this free class. And people are welcome to join if you want. So that is the introduction. Very, very important. Now I want to begin with the reality. Okay, so that document is key because it is the introduction. It's the base. It's the foundation of English. It's the explanation. But now it's the moment to take the explanation and to see the explanation in reality. Okay, so here we have an article and it's a typical business article with a very typical story. And now we're going to read just for pronunciation and also to analyze the vocabulary and the expression. So you can see here, it's from the business website CNBC and the topic is about travel, global travel. Okay, and the picture here is about a cruise ship so the topic is specifically about the cruise ship and you can see in the middle and it's in France, but the topic is just about the situation of the industry at the moment. OK, so the topic is Alaska is out, but the Caribbean is full speed ahead. What we know about cruising in 2021. So this is the journalist, Karen Gilchrist. And it's a good article just to analyze a little. So the same structure, I will read a little for pronunciation and to identify the important points. And then I return to analyze the vocabulary. So more than a year after COVID-19 brought cruise ships to a standstill, there are clear signs that cruising could be making a comeback. OK, the U.S. Centers for um, Disease Control and Prevention signaled this month that cruises may resume by mid-September, mid-summer with restrictions in a move cheered by operators and cruise lovers. So the second paragraph is not too difficult, but the first paragraph is interesting. We have some expressions, but we continue. That follows months of mounting, mounting pressures 
from the industry, which claims it's been unfairly treated due to the coronavirus restrictions, prompting Carnival to consider relocating ships and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis to sue. Okay, so very, very good vocabulary. I will explain now very soon. Still, with government re regulation and vaccination rollouts varying across the globe, seafarers have a lot to navigate. Okay, CNBC's Global Traveller took a look at what to expect from cruises in 2021. Okay, so I think that's enough, that's sufficient just to give you a little sample, to give you a little taste of pronunciation. And now I will explain the vocabulary. So here, if you want to say something is out, the significance it's not in your consideration. So if um, another example in sport, if you are the coach and you are looking at your list of players available, you say Juan is out, Brian is available, David is available, John is available, Isabel is out. So the significance is not available. Also in school, the teacher has the list. Juan is in, uh, Isabel is out. So maybe she is sick. So this is the same concept in your agenda for the cruise, Alaska. It's not possible to visit Alaska. That's the significance here. The next expression is very, very famous. Full speed ahead. We have two expressions you can say full speed ahead or you can also say full steam ahead and they're almost the same significance and they're good vocabulary and they're interesting so basically the significance is a metaphor related to the ship and if the ship is full speed it's like the maximum velocity and ahead is the direction so if the instruction the order full speed ahead the significance is to give your maximum and to continue um, absolutely with your maximum. So here, the significance is Alaska is not possible to visit, but the Caribbean is completely open and they want to receive everybody. Okay, so full speed ahead means it's your maximum possibility. The same expression is full steam ahead and steam is related to vapor. Okay, I think in Spanish you say vapor. And in English, we can say vapor as well, but really it's related to water. When you heat the water, specifically in the kettle, the kettle is the object. And when you boil the water, you have the steam. OK, so the steam is also for the engine, for the original engine. You put the coal or the product in the engine. It burns the coal and it creates the steam engine. So it's possible to move the train with steam, with vapor, and that's the significance. So if it's full steam ahead, again, it's a metaphor to the original ship that you have all the fuel and you put all the fuel because you want the maximum velocity. Okay, so that's really typical. Um, you can say my glasses are steaming up. So in the pandemic, with the mask and the glasses, and when you wear the mask and the glasses, it's very, um, possible the glasses will steam and the steam up is the significance it's not possible to see because you um, are blocked with the steam okay and um, maybe you could say he is steaming or she is steaming it's a bit informal and the significance is maybe very angry okay and on your own steam so to do something on your own steam means it's your your work you're responsible for your work you achieve your objective, you achieve your goal because of your own work. So no help from other people. It's on your from your own steam or on your own steam. So it's a bit flexible. And as I said, that expression is full steam ahead, which means to um, be give your maximum and to move with the maximum velocity. Okay, so the first expression, the first paragraph is very interesting. This expression, bring something to a standstill is the best expression in this paragraph to bring something to a standstill okay so the verb is to stand and most people understand stand but the adjective is still and this is typical for water so if the water is very crazy okay the water is ridiculous it's very bumpy so the opposite is bumpy water uh, crazy water wild water so the opposite we say is still like calm 
okay, typical for the children. If the children are crazy in the class, the children are hyper and the opposite is to be still or to be calm. And we say to stay still and the significance is to maintain the calm. And you can also say stand still, like freeze, okay? So these are typical vocabulary for the same situation. And here, the expression is to bring something to a standstill. So here it means no movement and it's the noun because we have the article. So I'll give you another example. The accident on the road, you have a busy, busy road, very, uh, very occupied, typical, a lot of traffic on the road, but you have one incident and this incident brings traffic to a standstill. Okay, so very possible in traffic, maybe for a celebrity. So for example, the Pope last year visited Ireland or two or three years ago, the Pope visited Ireland and this visit brought Dublin to a standstill. There was no traffic, no movement because everybody was calm because the city was closed. So to bring to a standstill is a very, very good expression. And here you can see the COVID-19 brought the ships to no movement. Okay. And then the final expression is to make a comeback. And I think in Hispano it's remontar. Okay, so to make a comeback, or you can just say to come back. So maybe to come back is literal to return. I go to Spain, but I come back to Ireland. So it depends on your position. The difference between to go and to come back depends on your position. So at the moment, I am in Ireland. Next week, I will go to uh, Brazil. Okay, I will go to Brazil, but next year, I will come back to Dublin. So it is a big difference and it is very important. And some people confuse the difference between to go and to come back. So it is important. But in here, we have the substantive. A comeback is typical in business. It's typical in sport. It means to return from a defeat. So you are losing. The football team are losing the match. And suddenly they score, they score and they come back. Okay. So it's possible in celebrities, as I said, when you do not see the celebrity for a long time, you think the celebrity has retired. Okay, the verb to retire and to make a comeback is basically to return. Okay, also in a debate, in a conversation, if your friend is critical of you, your friend gives you a bad comment, you have a comeback. So you have a return in relation to your comment. Okay, so a comeback would be a joke or a comment that you return. So really typical with friends when you're joking, your friend jokes with you and you have a good comeback. So that's flexible as well. And in this situation, the ship or the industry is returning. Okay, we can also say to bounce back. And to bounce back is to return very, very strong. There is an expression that's a bit, of, uh, a bit popular. We say bounce back ability. And I suppose it's very, very modern and it's a bit creative, but you can say bounce back ability. And that means you have the ability to adapt. You have the ability to respond. You have the ability to return after a difficult situation. OK, um, the next paragraph, I think, is OK as well. Just a verb to resume here. We have the modal verb may in the first paragraph. Also, we have the modal verb could. So the significance of could, as we saw in the introduction, could is for possibilities. You could say may, you could say might. The three possibilities are acceptable here. So could be making a comeback, may be making a comeback, might be making a comeback. The significance is it's a possibility. We are not sure, but it is a possibility. Here we have another modal verb. So again, it's the same significance as could, may, might, but just to make the article more entertaining it's probably not a good idea to repeat the same word so the big rule after the modal verb we have the next verb in the infinitive so modal plus infinitive without two that's the big big rule between the two so can go might have should look so here may resume so it's really really key and here cheered by operators so there is a verb to cheer and that means to be positive or to be animated maybe in sport you cheer your team so to cheer for your team 
means to support. Okay, but basically it's to shout. Okay, we have the phrasal verb to cheer up, which means maybe to feel happier, which is very, very typical. And maybe an order or an instruction to your friend, cheer up. You can have the adjective cheerful, and it means very, very happy, very positive. Or you can say cheery, which is the same as well. So the person is very cheery or the person is very cheerful. So really good vocabulary and really uh, flexible word. And of course, in the bar, in the for the meal, we say cheers, which is the <coughs> salute in Espanol, I think. OK, so not too difficult. The final paragraph, <coughs> um, I think, is clear as well. Mounting is very similar in Latin and Spanish to mount the bicycle, to mount the horse, but to mount a campaign in politics. If you want to begin a campaign, it's possible to mount a campaign. In the legal situation, you can mount a challenge. Okay, so it's possible in legal situations to mount a challenge, to mount an appeal. That's possible. But in relation to pressure, pressure is the noun. The verb is maybe to press and the pronunciation is important. So you have a lot of pressure. And if pressure is mounting, the significance is pressure is accumulating and pressure is building. OK, so that's the significance here. If pressure is mounting and very, very good, I think. Um, claims, it's a bit important as well. The verb to claim, it's like to believe, como reclamar or aclamar. So I claim to be the tallest boy in my house. Uh, Ireland claims to be the best country to visit you claim to be the most interesting person in your family <laughs> so it is a verb to claim also in insurance you can claim if you have an incident in the car you claim from the insurance okay and we have an expression claim to fame okay so your claim to fame is your friend is very very famous that's your claim to fame so it's a famous expression as well, your claim to fame. Um, very flexible. And here it's which the industry believes or the industry says it's being unfairly treated. So here it's difficult because it's an example of the um, passivo. It's the example of the passive in the present perfect. So it's very advanced, has been treated and unfairly is very good. So here it's the adverb because the word is fair, which is justo. So the person is very fair, okay, adjective. And the negative is unfair, okay? And then you can say the ad adverb, which is fairly or unfairly. So that's the adverb, okay? So very interesting. And here the verb is treat. So in business, you treat the customer well. In the hotel, you treat the guest very well. And for me, due to, is very, very important English. And every day we explain this. It's like because of, due to, or owing to. Really, really good vocabulary. So the party is cancelled due to the pandemic. The holiday is cancelled because of the problem. The party is cancelled owing to the pandemic. So there's very good synonyms and very good possibilities with this uh, structure here, okay? Also due is expected. For example, the bus is due in 10 minutes. Uh, it means the bus is expected uh, in 10 minutes. You are due a holiday. And the significance is you are entitled to a holiday. Okay, that's a very important vocabulary as well. Entitled to a holiday. You deserve a holiday. So you are due a holiday because you have waited and waited and waited. And now you expect to have your holiday. Okay, also the word overdue is very famous as well. And this is important because you have waited a long time and it's over. It's like excessive. You are waiting excessively. So that's really common vocabulary as well. And here, the final word is prompting, which is difficult as well. And I think I have explained this previously last week. To prompt is to encourage somebody. Um, the best example is the television. So the lady or the man reading the news, you have the, the screen, the plantilla with the news and the man or the woman is reading. And then, so that's the teleprompter. So the words prompt you to speak. So it's like to make you, okay? 
So for example, cigarettes, um, my, my health, my lungs, I had maybe the lungs, the, your bad lungs prompted you to change your habit. Okay, so maybe the bad health made you change your action. And here prompted you is the same. It made you or it encouraged you. Okay, and the final. So here, the restrictions made the company to consider relocating ships. And the next verb that's very important is to sue. And it's very typical in legal situations. So if you have a problem and somebody wants to challenge you to sue another person is to bring another person to court or to bring some uh, a legal case against another person. So the verb to sue is very, very important. And that's good analysis. OK, so that's just two paragraphs, not too difficult, quite clear um, and probably you can understand the majority and the pronunciation as well is important. So for me, that's interesting. Now, I will continue with the phrasal verb list. Okay, so this is a phrasal verb list and difficult. We have 20 pages. You can see at the top, there are 20 pages. And since January, we have started, uh, we have been using this document since January. And basically, it's a list of phrasal verbs. But for me, as I said before, the phrasal verbs are a big part of English and they're very, very important. So this list and this document is really super important. And today, I think we will continue with the verb to stand, the possible combinations with the verb to stand, because last week or the last time, the last phrasal verb was to spell out. And the significance is to explain something in detail. So your friend you have to spell out the problem to your friend. So you have to explain the problem in detail to your friend. Okay, so it is typical to spell out the problem, to spell out the instructions. The next verb is to stand. So of course, it's physical to stand. The past is stood, it's irregular. And maybe the most typical situation is I cannot stand the weather. And the significance is tolerate. It's possible bear, it's possible cope with. So these are very, very important. I cannot stand the weather has a significance. No puedo tolerar. I can't tolerate the weather. I can't bear the weather or I can't cope with the weather. So very, very important situation. And um, we have an expression as well to make stand is maybe um, a personal opinion. So if you want to express your dissatisfaction or if you want to express your anger you make a stand so for example protest so to make a stand is probably similar to make a protest um, and we have some phrasal verbs with the stand we can say to stand by i think we have explained this before so by is the position so it's like beside and if you stand by your friend literal physically it's your position, but it's more metaphorical for support. So if you stand by your friend, you support your friend constantly. Maybe your friend has a problem and you stand by your friend. And the significance is you support your friend. OK, and I think I explained this before. The Stand By Me is a famous song and that's very, very typical. And um, I think we've explained a lot of this before because we have the verb to stand out, which is destacar. Um, the other possibility is to stand up for yourself. I think this is the one we did not explain. OK, so to stand up for yourself is very similar to make a stand and it's really to protect yourself or to defend yourself. So if people are criticizing you and you accept the criticism, but one day you say no, you stand up for your, yourself and you defend yourself. So to stand up for yourself is maybe to defend yourself. OK, and very common, very, very typical in conversation. And I think that's the most typical here. You can see the next possibilities. Yes, stand up to. So as I said, stand up for yourself. But again, if it's contra, you stand up to the other person. Um, and I, I did explain this one as well in the romantic situation. If you go on the date and the other person does not arrive, the other person stands you up because you're waiting and waiting and waiting. OK, but the only two we didn't explain was to stand up for yourself, which is to defend. 
yourself. And here's the example. Every individual must, so it's an obligation or has to, exactly the same, stand up for what they believe in. So you have to uh, make a stand. You have to defend yourself for your opinion, for your rights. And the second possibility is stand up too, which is just the same, except two is contra against. So here, I think you should recommendation or advice stand up to your older brother so your older brother is very maybe difficult and the younger brother has to accept the situation or maybe challenge the brother and if you challenge the brother you stand up to the brother okay so it's an example of the prepositions and the movement um, and to tell him to stop pushing you around is maybe physical if you push somebody around it's physical, like to intimidate or to bully, but it could be metaphorical, like emotional as well. Okay. Um, I think that's good. And that was just to review the verb to stand. And the next one is stay. So the possibilities with stay is usually related to time. So maybe location as well. I stay with my friend. I stay in Ireland. Um, that's no problem. And in a hotel, you can stay in a hotel, but prepositions and possible phrasal verbs. So yes, to stay out is typical for the party. So the boy or the girl goes to the party at 10 o'clock and they do not return home until the morning. So that's perfect. They stay out all night. That's very typical as well. So to stay out all night um, is possible. And that's... Um, very typical for teenagers, for adults, for everybody when the party, if you stay out all night, that's the significance. Of course, the opposite is to stay in. And the significance is you stay at home, you have dinner, you watch a movie, so you stay in tonight. Okay. And um, the next one is to stay over. And this is typical. And over is the preposition for movement. So your house is here, but your friend's house is here, and you want to sleep in your friend's house. So you stay over. And this is very typical. So for the children, maybe the friend wants to stay over in your house for one night. And that means maybe to sleep and just really to stay there for the night. OK, so that's very typical to stay over. You can also say to sleep over. And the substantivo is a sleep over. OK, so very, very good vocabulary as well. And um, that is stay over. Stay under, no, maybe in relation to weight, if you have a diet. And again, at Christmas, I eat a lot of food at Christmas, so I put on weight. So we say to put on weight or to gain weight, okay? But my objective, my objective is to stay with my weight, to stay under 80 kilograms. So my objective is to stay under. So that's really literal. There's no difficulty there. Um. And I suppose another one is the expression to stay over. As we said, the example is it takes you so long. It's in, like long is a long time, but so long is intensified to take the bus home. So why don't you just stay over? Very good example. So your friend visits you and it's a long time to travel home on the bus. So the suggestion is to stay over. OK, um, and that's it. Stay up, stay up as possible as well. Yeah in relation to the party and your friend visits and your friend stays in your house but the two of you stay up and the significance is you stay awake okay so to stay up all night has the significance to stay awake all night um and i think that's most of the possibility stay back doesn't it well yes to stay back exists in school so or in work possible to stay back in school or in work for example everybody leaves work at four o'clock everybody goes home but one person stays back and that means they continue to work they stay in the office and they continue to work in school it's possible as well but it's usually maybe related to development so everybody progresses to the next year but this person stays back because they need to repeat the year so that's a definite possibility as well um stay about stay around no okay so they're the most common possibilities with the phrase adverb to stay and very very good okay so um yeah 
we look at the next verb to stick and then maybe this is the last verb. So the verb is to stick. I think it's like pegar in Espanol. So stick is flexible because we have a stick, which is como un palo. In the tree, you have a stick, which is like a branch, como un rama. Okay, so that's the first significance of a stick. But the verb to stick is related to um, adhesive. Okay, so here I have, well, it's on the ground. Now here I have a piece of paper that um, it's adhesive. So you have adhesive here and you can stick this piece of paper onto the, because it has adhesive. Okay, so the verb is related to adhesive and the adjective is sticky. Okay, but also we say a sticky situation. And that means a very complicated situation. So if the situation's a bit sticky, it's not simple, it's not easy, it's a bit complicated. So a sticky situation is a difficult situation, a complicated situation. Okay, that's very, very famous. Um, sticky, yeah, that's very typical as well. Um, the past simple is stuck, so it's irregular. Past simple irregular, so very typical in, in traffic, for example. I am stuck in traffic, um, and it means you cannot move because it's like adhesive, it's like the glue. Okay, so we say glue, which is the uh, liquid that it combines two things, it's the glue. Maybe you can say this person is the glue in the family. Okay, and that means this is the person that connects everybody. And um, also, we have the expression to be glued to the television, literal. Well, no, not literal, but it means that you're addicted to the television and you cannot stop watching the television. You are glued to the television. Maybe in a relationship, they are glued to each other. So they con uh, constantly are together. So that's possible as well, glued to each other. Um, maybe you can say joined at the hip. That's a very typical situation in romantic situations when the couple are together all the time. They are joined at the hip. Maybe glued at the hip would be the same interpretation. Um, and good vocabulary. So stick is here. And the phrasal verb to stick up for yourself is very famous. And it has the same significance as to stand up for yourself. So if you stand up for yourself, you defend yourself. So if you stick up for yourself, the significance is you defend yourself as well, okay? Typically in discussions, in arguments, or when people bully another person, you defend yourself, so you stick up for yourself. In Ireland, we have this very famous expression, and I think in other countries, I don't know if it's really common, but in Ireland, it's so common to give someone stick. is very informal. And the significance is maybe to criticize or to uh, slag. So we have some very important vocabulary to criticize or to slag. And that means to give somebody stick. I think it's a joke in relation to the stick. When you hit somebody, you're maybe uh, punishing, castigar. So to give someone stick is obviously not physical. It's more metaphorical that you're uh, punishing the other person with your comment. I think. That's really the significance. So to give someone stick is really to punish somebody with your comments. Maybe a joke. It's usually a joke, um, but it could be serious as well. So to give someone stick. And I think that would be the other most possibilities. We have another expression, to live in the sticks. So basically, the sticks in this situation is a metaphor for the tree. Okay, so the big forest and you have the tree, and you have the tree trunk, okay? And if you live in the sticks, the stick is the metaphor for the tree trunk. So you live in the countryside, you live in the forest, you live in the rural area, so you live in the sticks, okay? And here, we yes, we have two more prep, uh, phrasal verbs. To stick to your decision, it's the same concept as adhesive. So to continue with your decision, to stick, with your decision to continue with your decision very important and the other possibility is to stick it to you which could be related to punishment so if you stick it to somebody it means you um as we said here severely criticize somebody so it's related to the structure to give 
somebody's stick. Okay, so they're the most typical examples. And here you can see my boss really stuck it to me. So he really criticized me. He really complained or she really complained when I arrived late to work for the third time this week. Very good example, very fluent, very possible. The next example, even though incluso aunque in Espanol, incluso aunque, English is a hard language or a difficult language to learn or to master. You must, obligation, modal verb, stick to it. You must continue with your objective. You must persevere, okay? And finally, uh, here, Joseph, Jose, Jose in Espanol, I think Joseph in English, joined the army because he believes he must, obligation, so obligation, he must stick up for his country. He must defend his country. So very, very good vocabulary, very typical phrase of verbs. That list is very important. I highly recommend, okay, I highly recommend to study the phrasal verbs. They are very, very important and a big part of English. And it's really the key for people to learn the uh, natural conversation. It's really the key to learn fluent English. And we use these all the time, okay? So little by little, this is very important. And you can see we're on page 16 or 17. So we're nearly completing this document. And um, next tomorrow, we will continue with T. And uh, now I'll just finish with a few expressions here in relation to idioms. Okay, so again, idioms are super frequent with family, super common in conversation. And I just want to give you a few examples here. So time after time, I think is the last expression. And the significance is again and again and again. So for example, my dog, he barks time after time. So he barks again and again. So he always barks. And there is a famous song, time, <laughs> I'm not going to sing, but there is another famous song, time after time. And um, it means again and again and again. So very consistently. Um, and again, you can say time and time again. It's exactly the same. So it is a typical combination. The next possibility is clear. I think most people understand this. The verb is to fly, come up, bolar. So the airplane fly. I fly, you fly, the third person, it's I-E-S. That's irregular. So I fly, you fly, he flies, she flies, and the airplane flies. But here it's time, and it's the third person, so time flies. And that means life moves very, very quickly. And the expression is time flies when you are having fun. Okay, so time flies when you are having fun. So when you enjoy the moment, when you are having a great time, the time moves very, very quickly. Okay, the opposite, we say time is dragging. So the verb to drag is arrastrar, I think in Espanol, arrastrar. So maybe the bag, you have the bag on the floor and you drag the bag. So really, really good vocabulary um, to drag the bag on the floor. It's also possible in relation to people to drag the boy or to drag the girl <laughs> out of bed. And the significance is the mother, when the child is tired in the morning for school, the mother needs to drag the boy out of bed. And it means physically to take the boy out of bed. So to drag the boy or the girl out of bed. Um, and I just see we have a question here. Uh, Ah, okay, yes, I see the ma we have a comment in um, in Irish, because in Irish we have another language, and in Irish you can say Irish, August Irish. Uh, well, you can see the computer is just having a collapse because it does not understand Irish language. So in Irish we can say Irish, which means again, and August is and. So this is Gaelic language, and it means again and again and again. So yes, we have a Gaelic language, which is... Um, very different from English. So here, to drag the floor on the bed, to drag the boy out of bed, and time is dragging. The significance is it's going very, very slow. And um, you can say the meeting is a drag. This person is a drag, and it means maybe uh, taking the energy. So it's negative. And also for a cigarette, we say a drag of a cigarette. Okay, and also some people maybe understand a drag queen. 
And that's maybe the man who, who dresses as a woman, you know, the famous flamboyant people, and that's a drag queen, okay? But drag of a cigarette is like a little t- smoke of a cigarette. Um, and that's it. So really, really good. So Time Flies is very famous. And Time for a Change, I think, is no problem. So now is the opportunity for a change. Time for a change. The next one is typical. Time heals all wounds. So a wound is como herida in Espanol, maybe similar in Portuguese, maybe. A wound is like an injury. Okay, so there's a little difference. An injury is maybe muscular. So you have an injury in your back. It's like pain. It's muscular. But a wound is maybe blood. So maybe here you can see a little cut. When you have a cut, it's a wound. And the verb to heal is very important as well. And it means to cure. So the significance is with time makes everything better. Time makes everything good. So time heals everything or time cures all the wounds. Okay. Um, And that is very, very famous. Time heals all wounds. And then here you can see as well, time is a great healer. So the person is a healer and it's a metaphor that time is the best healer. Uh, But I disagree a little. So sometimes it doesn't heal everything or sometimes because if you wait a long time, you will you will not continue to to be alive. (laughs) But um, that's the expression as well. Time heals all wounds and that's it. And finally. I'll just, I suppose, continue with the next one. Time is money is very famous as well. So this is a very typical expression for people who are motivated by money, very ambitious people for for business. They say time is money. So maybe they feel every moment is an opportunity to do business. Every moment is an opportunity to take advantage of money. So that's a famous expression as well. Time is, uh, is money. Okay. And That's it. So I suppose the next one, time is of the essence, means time is the most important. So you can say time is of the essence. And I think that's similar in Spanish, similar in Portuguese. And basically it means time is very, very important. It's very uh, valuable, maybe the most important. Okay, so you need to take advantage of the time because time is of the essence, a bit formal, not so common, but it is important. And then the next one is typical. I had the time of my life. So the significance is I had the best trip, the best holiday, the best moment. It was the time of my life. And then finally, um, this expression is famous as well. I have time on my hands. So obviously it's physical. It's metaphorical that you have a lot of time. So you have time to kill. Okay, that's another expression, time to kill or time to use. So you have time on your hands. That means you have free time. Okay, good. Again, this list is useful. This list is important and similar with the phrasal verbs and idioms. These two areas, in my opinion, are a very useful area to study if you want to understand local native speaking people. Um, Because we use these all the time, also in movies, in series. They are key expressions and are very, very important. Okay, so thank you, everybody. The vocabulary is here. Um, I think that could be almost the end of the class. Thank you so much for attending. Thank you to everybody on Facebook for watching um, the recorded class. And thank you to everybody on YouTube. Um, Maybe now is an opportunity if anybody wants to speak during the class to practice. If you have a question, now is the moment if you want to ask. Um, So feel free to ask a question in the uh, Zoom group if you want. Remember, everybody, uh, this is the social media information, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter. So these are all the details if you want to connect. Um, This is the schedule for the week. So today at four o'clock, we have another group. I think we will continue today maybe with sport, but we have three or four people, I think, confirmed for the group today. So if you want to join, you are welcome to join here, the specific webinar at the bottom and tomorrow. At nine o'clock in the morning, we will continue with speaking practice with different groups and different people. And that's the plan. Remember, um, sorry, that's my dog. Well, I gave him enough attention already, so he's still asleep at the moment. But I wanted to show you this document. It's the donation. So this is free. Yes, it's my job. And yes, it's a good opportunity for me to recover after all the changes for the pandemic. So this is the objective 
of the free classes to maybe grow online. And um, thank you everybody for your support so far until now. And here is the information if you want to make a small contribution or a small donation, the possibility preferable is maybe bank transfer, if maybe just a small donation of one euro, anything you want would be amazing. The second possibility is Revolut, the application which is popular to transfer money. And the third possibility is the application Bizum, which is popular in Spain, if you want to make a small donation or a small contribution to say thank you. I see we have another question. So just let me check the chat. Um, okay, no problem. I just see some comments to say thank you. Thank you, everybody. Um, enjoy the rest of your afternoon and hopefully you will have a very good uh, day. Thank you so much and uh, talk to you all soon. And thank you again for, for watching the class. Bye bye.